Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD Small Four. Today, guys, we're doing our match review of Oman Nil, Thailand Nil um, of the Asian Cup. So, we'll be reviewing this game. They'll also do Kyrgyzstan versus Saudi. This will be a very short review, guys, because, like I said, a whole lot of there wasn't really a whole lot of action today. And plus, you know, I'm coming exhausted. And plus, I'm doing my match day three prediction. So, I'm going to keep this around five minutes probably for you guys. So, we're going to start with the first game we got here. It's Oman versus Thailand. Uh, for me, this game, guys, it was very, very. There wasn't a whole lot that happened. Both teams were pretty defensive in the game, and I think for Oman, I'm really disappointed with them because this is one of the this is one of the teams that I think could be a dark horse in this year's Asian Cup. And the fact that they are so good defensively is amazing. But for me, the attack is just not good enough, you know. And with this draw, it puts a lot of pressure in the last game against Kyrgyzstan, where they have to win that game. They have to win that game. And for Thailand, they're in a good position because even if they lose to Saudi. That Oman will have to win big against Kyrgyzstan. And I don't see any encouragement that Oman's going to destroy Kyrgyzstan. Even though Kyrgyzstan have been awful in this group. So, it could come down to neck and neck. It could be very, very interesting to see what happens. Goal difference can come very key. So, I think for the first half, guys, I think for overall, Oman was a better team. They had more possession of the game. They had better possession, as you can see. First half, they had 61. Second half, they had 80% possession. Thailand, on the other hand, didn't really create any big, big chances. I think the best chance they had in the first half was Dola. That Dola chance, which was, I believe, cleared off the line from Oman. And then Oman had a really late chance in the second half with Al Sabi getting that um, chance there that was really, really close to scoring. But yeah, other than that, there wasn't really any whole lot of key moments in both both teams. And I think for Oman, for Thailand, man, they played well. I think they had a good game, and I think their intentions was clear. We'll play for a draw, settle for a point. And that's going to be a good result for them. Because four points is going to be enough to go to the round of 16. It's just a matter of, are they going to finish second or third? As for Oman, they have to be Kyrgyzstan. They have to be Kyrgyzstan now in the final match day. Which we'll get on to right now. So, Kyrgyzstan nil, Saudi Arabia 2. Ah, uh, Kyrgyzstan, man. They were so, so disappointing. I expected more from Kyrgyzstan. I really did. Saudi Arabia on the day. They weren't really really that great, in my opinion. I, Saudi Arabia, for me, were obviously the better team, don't get me wrong, but Kyrgyzstan were so bad. Like, the amount of mistakes these guys did was unbelievable. That for red card, man. The first red card, I believe, was Akutov. It was such a bad challenge. Such a, such a bad challenge. A very unnecessary challenge. And he got a studs up. He got to get sent off. It was originally going to be given as a yellow card. Referee checking for the VAR. Red card was given. Then Tokotov. He had a good game and goal, but he had made two big errors. That first goal, man, big, big mistake from him, you know. Uh, Kano scoring there, I think he should have done better there. I believe he got his palm on it, and he bounces in the net, I believe. Um, great, great pass there from Abdullah Hamid. And then this, and the, the, another red card. Once again, another bad challenge, a very unnecessary challenge. Second red. And then Saudi Arabia kept pushing and pushing, and then they finally scored the breakthrough goal when someone took an effort from distance, and he he say, he caught it, and then it slipped I slipped. So, yeah, for Saudi Arabia, man, I'm very disappointed. I expected more from the likes of Al Dasari. Um, he was, on, um, in my opinion, very ineffective. And for the Saudi team, guys, like, this is a very... I feel like Saudi's just been so mediocre. It's just that the problem is that this group is just not that challenging, which is the reason why Saudi been able to get away with this. Because, in my opinion, this kind of style isn't going to be effective for them knock on stage. This kind of closeness and effectiveness... Yeah, they got to do better in the final third, man. Especially when they're down to two men. Especially when they're down to nine men. They have their midfielder sent off. They have a center back sent off. And you can only score two goals. 28 shots, seven on target is sad. Like, I expect more from Saudi. But for Kyrgyzstan, man, I think it's really, really hopeless for them now. Because even if they do win their next game against, um, what is it called? I think it's Oman in the final match today. Goal difference is really bad. Their goal difference is really bad. And I don't think they're going to have enough to make it through. So, Anyways, those are my quick thoughts. Like I said, guys, very, very short review. I didn't really want to do this too long because I'm kind of busy. So um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Remember, guys, to like and subscribe. And, yeah, stay tuned, guys. And, if, and in around 20 minutes to 30 minutes, you guys will see my match day three predictions.